Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse, and today we're starting a new campaign in Crusader Kings 3 with the Prince of Darkness mod. And we're going to be playing as Thetmes, the king of the Web of Knives, and he's part of the Banu Hakim clan. And Banu Hakim is probably the clan I am least familiar with, so let's start with their little lore snippet. Based in their hidden fortress Alamut in the Middle East, the Banu Hakim are traditionally seen by the Western Canaanites as dangerous assassins and diabolists. But in truth, they are guardians, warriors and scholars who seek to distance themselves from the War of Princes. Although to be fair, since we are the King of Web of Knives, we are a dangerous assassin and diabolist. But regardless, presenting the facade of a united clan, the children of Hakim are actually deeply divided by factionalism. The recent arrival of a new divisive elder has put everyone on edge. These issues has allowed new foes to creep, mostly via the crusade, into the Middle East which was once fully under their control. The Banu Hakim could be an unstoppable force if only they were unified. They need someone worthy of the black throne of Hakim, and perhaps that someone is you. So we're the king of the web of knives and we'll get more into what that means when we're in the game and we'll also get more into Thetmes lore and his whole deal in the game as well because I think the in-game lore is usually a bit more comprehensive than this and it's usually the same thing. So let's just get into the game. Okay, so before we unpause we have a couple of things we want to do. But first, let's just have a look at us. What's our deal? Well, our diplomacy is absolutely terrible. But we have a good Intrigue, which is great because Intrigue is probably gonna be the most important stat in our campaign. The other three is pretty mediocre, but we have a great prowess, so we can definitely hold our own in a fight, which is always good. And we're also zealous, sadistic and <laughs> deceitful, so <laughs> we seem like a really fun guy to be around. So let's have a look at our lore as well. As a mortal, Thetmes was a soldier in Ptolemy's army fighting against Cleopatra and her Roman allies. When Ptolemy fell, the gladiatorial games became popular. Thetmes, an Egyptian, proved himself well as a fearsome gladiator and won the attention of a wealthy Syrian cloth merchant who bought him. It was during this time that Shahiri of the Asimite took notice of the promising recruit. Tempt tempted with the prospect of killing as many Romans as he would like, Thetmes was eager for his embrace. By the 12th century, he had become the leader of the Web of Knives. This informal cult within the cult is dedicated to the return of ur -Shulgi, said to be the herald of Hakim. The destructive and sadistic stories about this figure makes the Web of Knives and Thetmes a decisive faction in Alamut, opposed to both Jamal's Muslims and Al-Sharad's Old Guard. The Egyptian can count on the fanaticism of, of his cultists to prevail. And future in, in canon, Thetmes' triumph will, will be slow to come, but it will in the early 2000s, with ur -Shulgi's return and Jamal's destruction. Thetmes will take his rightful place as right hand of one of the most powerful creatures to have ever existed. So basically, our goal is to pave the way so this guy can come back. And... Uh, Let's have a look at our council. And <laughs> our councillor is also absolutely terrible. It's great to have a council of um, a total of one diplomacy between me and the chancellor. So we're probably gonna switch him out with someone else, with maybe someone competent. So what do we have in diplomacy way? So we have this guy who seemed to be our chaplain, but this guy is. Well, he's not terrible at learning, so he could he could take his place. There's not really anyone else I want to put there. Who else could we put as a chaplain? Well, our spy master can, so how about we do a little bit of a shuffle? Uh, first of all, let's just swap these two. That should be okay. Because he had pretty okay... Uh, intrigue as well so let's swap between those should be all right and the steward mr steward is absolutely terrible and you have actually a pretty decent intrigue do you have no you have one stewardship <laughs> so you're even worse so that doesn't help um how about you um yeah okay I don't think we can swap around anymore, and these are our uh, powerful vassals, so I think we're gonna keep them there. It's not the biggest deal to have a bad steward, so we're just gonna leave him there. Okay, so let's have a look at our, our uh, religion, which is a really interesting part of this campaign. Because first of all, we have religious law, 
which allows us to basically condemn someone who who's a sinner basically so if we find a sinner or we have a vassal we want to get rid of and he happens to be a sinner we can condemn him and and strip him of all of his um, all of his titles and just give him to someone we actually like so we might make use of that if we well if we find some if we have some rowdy vassals who is also a sinner which isn't it's not unusual but the biggest thing that about our religion is that we have sanctioned diablerie. So diablerie is essentially encouraged. So you better believe we're going to drink some vampires. And hopefully we can boost our, uh, our blood potency a lot during this campaign. Uh, can't guarantee it though. Because we're actually going to have to get opportunities to diablerize people. But hopefully we're, we'll be able to boost our blood potency a lot. Which is going to be real fun. Uh, we also have a secret cult, which doesn't really matter. It's just harder to convert us. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Uh, we also cannot marry. So we can't uh, marry off our children and get a bunch of alliances that way. So we're going to have to find other ways to get alliances. I, I mean, I guess we could um, have have our kids... Well, I say kids. Our created vampires. Um, I guess we could just hope that they get a different religion, which happens from time to time when you sire a child uh, and just marry them off then. But in general, I think we'll have to count on not being able to do that. If it happens, we can get some alliances that way. But it's not going to be a big deal because we're probably not going to be in too many wars, which you'll see in a bit why, and everything will make sense. We also have kinslaying, which is shunned, so we're gonna try to avoid kinslaying in this campaign, so we don't have the the uh, the same thing happen in this as it happened last campaign, where we maybe did a little bit of kinslaying, so we're gonna try to avoid it. The rest is pretty normal vampire stuff, strict masquerade, we can have ghouls, all of that stuff. Although, blood oaths are criminal, so... We're going to have to be careful with blood, o blood oathing because I can be pretty pretty like gung-ho when it comes to blood oaths because it's a good way to keep your vassals in check if they do happen to be a little bit rowdy. Uh, what else was I thinking about? Uh, we're going to hold off with decisions right now. I know usually we go through decisions and see basically goals of the campaign and stuff, but this time we're going to skip over that for now. You'll see why. <laughs> it will all make sense. And the Web of Knives. So the Web of Knives is basically a Assassin for Hire service. So this little interface is going to fill up with names and targets. Well, um, customers and targets. And uh, we're basically going to be asked to kill people and we're going to get paid. So this is going to be a great way of making some money. So... Uh, this, this is why the intrigue is so very important for us. So that's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of killing. And hopefully our family isn't going to pop up here too much. So we can avoid being a kinslayer again. We're also the head of the house. So we're going to pop up legacies and spend these before someone takes the head of the house from us. But I'm not entirely sure what to go with. There is the Banu Hakim legacy. But I had a look at this and I don't think it's very good for us. Like, Dread gained, whatever, that's fine, stupid hiccups. Um, we also have some like commander traits, don't care too much about that, especially since if we were to fight a lot of wars, it's going to be a against a lot of other Banu Hakim, so this is going to give them traits as well. Title creation isn't going to matter too much, and you'll see why. Um, cavalry damage and stuff is not going to matter too much. We're all about, it's all about the champions in with vampires. And some same true faith opinion is fine, but we don't need it. Um, learning is always good. More piety. Monthly uh, lifestyle is very good, actually. We got some knight advantage. But again, if we are going to fight people, it's probably going to be other Banu Hakim. So this is probably not going to be too impactful for us. Um, I did like this one because it gives us a domain limit because we only have three and... Uh, Having another domain is going to do wonders for our economy 
like not right away because well we have to get another title but eventually we will and um, having more domain limit is very good popular opinion isn't bad to have less uprisings getting some stewardship more vassal base contribution from tax is pretty good so i think we're gonna go with this i like the extra money i like the extra domain limit which will get us more money and so stewardship is always good popular opinion is good and we could get our diplomacy up because we still have we should have at least two and uh, but it's so low i don't know if it's if it will matter if we have two more uh, we might just go a little bit with knights we could go right there is ash and thieves as well and there's a reason i didn't take this because it gives us intrigue which is great we might just take this to get the two points of intrigue but i don't think we're gonna go further than that in it because what we do in the shadows is probably gonna be more harmful to us than beneficial because uh, it gives us hostile scheme resistance and hostile scheme success chance so in the case where we get a contract for another banu hakim that will be act actively like um bad for us because they get plus 25 hostile scheme resistance which isn't good for us so i don't want that like we could get some martial and nice advantage which is good but i think maybe lose some tyranny because we might do some tyrannical things and get the more intrigue because intrigue is gonna be really important for us so every point of intrigue is gonna be good although Again, this gives intrigue to all Banu Hakim, but it's not as important as this, I think, because I think it cancels each other out. Because I think one intrigue gives 1% protection while it gives us plus one offensive. I don't know what the exact math, but I think it's like something like that. So I think we'll grab those two. And actually, we can have a look at exactly what it does. Um, because it should say... Yeah, so it just 1% per point. So... It cancels out when I when I do stuff to other Banu Akim. Um, we are also Egyptian, but there are no Egyptians here. So we're probably going to want to do a hybrid culture with Tajik, but that's going to be in a while. This, uh, yeah, right now it's zero gain, uh, yearly gain, which we should probably do something about that. Um, let's uh, promote cultural acceptance. That should boost it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we get 0.34 per year, which isn't a lot, but it's something. Actually, what are we losing? 2% domain taxes. Yeah, so we'll see how much that drops, I guess. And I think we're going to unpause now to... Actually, we have a court to hold. So we should do that right away. Just get this going and just it for the first one. My Marshal Duke Dujaha uh, approaches me, bringing a hand to his heart like he often does. My lord, I have a brilliant idea. How about we host a fair, perhaps even a festival for the common folk, to expose, expose them to one of the different cultures in our beautiful kingdom. Dujaha explains his idea further, until he realizes that he's dangerously close to over-explaining it. It'll cost money, but I'm sure it'll help foster a more positive relationship between our people. I mean... I kind of want to hold on to my money right now. But I also... Oh! Ug uh, what, what are those? I don't want those. What even, what even is an Uggz? Uh, it's the northern one. We have a little bit of it. Uh, they have horse lords, warrior culture, sort of higher. And ruling caste. But I don't think we're... Huh. Okay. Never mind. We do get uh, some acceptance of it. But I don't think we're gonna dual. I was gonna say dual class with that, but um, I, we can't spend any money on that. That's a bad idea. Go away. My son Duke uh, Bajazet Al Nazir hurries to my side with bloodshot eyes, searching for the assembled court. Did you hit the weed again? <laughs> Why are your eyes bloodshot? My lord, I'm sure someone in the kingdom is out to get me. I have no evidence, but I <laughs> suspect Baron Aaron. Well, that's. That sounds like a kid show uh, person, Baron Aaron. Given his reputation for villainy, 
Come for my, uh, comes for my throat. I beg you, imprison Aaron. Put a stop to this madness. Who the fuck is Baron Aaron? Um, who, who are you? He's a barony guy. And apparently a villain. He's cynical, gregarious and fickle. <laughs> by the by blood, he must be stopped. <laughs> uh, actually, who is this? He is my son and steward. Um, malice is not a crime in itself. Um, I guess we can just question him because we are... We are pretty good at intrigue, so let's try that out. Whoa, what? You spent 150... Oh my god, that is expensive. Crap. My lord, let me introduce myself. My name is Nabil and I'm a wealthy merchant from the capital. I, could help, I couldn't help but notice that in recent times the realm's finances has not been the healthiest. Of course, you have been admi uh, administering them egregiously, but perhaps you might find some use for some extra gold. I'm willing to buy a minor settlement off your hands in exchange for a generous sum of gold. Would it be acceptable? Um, okay, so... Barony F... Dawin. Okay, so it's not created. So he would create that barony for us. And uh, he would probably be our vassal then. So we can ask him to pay more. It's very unlikely that he would. So yeah, sure, have the win. Great. Uh, now we're just going to check that he is actually a vassal. <laughs> Um, it seems like he is. Let's find Darwin. Um, Darwin. Where are you? Wait, where is it? Oh, there he is. So, this, uh, this just, this is just gonna get us more money. So, that was an excellent event. Okay, so, we're gonna unpause. And you'll see why we've been, uh, well, I've been uh, not showing everything. Persheth is the seat of a the Asamite clan, a mysterious group for outsiders, ruled by the newly crowned and very contested eldest Nakurtum. Their facade of unity is, shown is showing cracks as various factions makes their power plays. Thetmes of the Web of Knives wants the clan to become a fanatic cult of assassins, prepared to serve an ar as an army for the return of his black master. Al-Sharad of the Sorcerers is walking a path of moderation, viewing the Asimite as judges and diplomats. Finally, Jamal, the warrior, the warriors, is a devout Mus Muslim and would welcome our uh, rep uh, rapprochement with the Ashari Caliphate of Medina. This political unrest has helped the growth of another group in the region, the lost tribe of Dastur, Dastur Anosh, a heretic venerating the second generation of vampires. Crippled by division and inefficiency, Will the As Asimite clan find new common common purpose or implode into civil war? I will unite per uh, Persia by diplomacy or else. <laughs> I like the or else. I feel like it should be or by force or something, but no, it's or else. So, here it is. A house divided. So, this is a mechanic that is basically the, um, um, the Iberia divided. So we got that in Persia with vampires, so it's better. But the Banu Hakim have ruled over Persia since the legendary founder Hakim founded Alamut. To the outside eye, there has been nothing but perfect, uh, perfect unity between them since that time, but the truth is very different. Factionalism threatens to break down the children of Hakim's vaunted discipline from the inside. The arrival of a new eldest, the controversial Nak Nakurtum, might be the boiling point. While a civil war is not yet seemingly possi possible, each group is now sharpening their daggers to make sure that they, and, on and they only, will shar shape the future of the Banu Hakim. The main con contenders for this victory are the Web of Knives, a secretive cult of deadly fanatics, the Ashira, who favors bringing the clan closer to Islam, the Council of Scrolls, who represents the moderates and conciliators, the Silsila, an elitist group of uh, Zoroastrian old guards, and finally, the Lost Tribe, a mysterious cult of heretical worship. The House Divided struggle is won by influence. You can check each faction progress with a special minor decision. Hakim is watching. 
So we also get to choose our predatory inclination, which is, I feel like this, this could have come slightly before so it doesn't break up in between that, but whatever. We're gonna go with the seat because that's our jam. And uh, we can either go Kaushimar, which is on sleeping people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeding on sleeping, female, uh, feeding on family, or feeding on like regular people. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna go footpad just to get the, the intrigue skill. And this doesn't give us a special a special discipline. Yeah, I know about the, about the primogen. Um, but I don't think it needs to. Oh, right. We do start with a fully formed schemer, which is great. It does give us, what is it? Yeah, intrigue and hostile scheme power. And there's a lot of like, hostile schemes, bonuses and stuff. So this makes us better. But uh, nothing in animal. Choleric is, uh, well, there's... Potence, we already have celerity, but potence is mostly for fighting and we won't be doing a lot of fighting and we'll see why. <laughs> I keep alluding to it, but I'll get there, I promise. So I think we are not going to go for potence because, like I said, we're not going to fight a lot. We already have Obfuscate, which is a great, um, a great tree for sneaking. Fortitude is always good for surviving sneaky people. Phlegmatic gives us aspects, and I think we're gonna go aspects because it does give us, uh, well, it's scheme resistance in the beginning, uh, but it do it does go over to scheme power, hostile scheme power, power power, advantage and stuff. So I think we're going aspects. It helps us. Uh, well, it will let us uh, see people's auras eventually, but it also. Uh, helps us with our schemes, which is going to be very important. So it is what we are going for. Excellent. So finally, let's have a look at House Divided, or the struggle in Persia, or the Banu Hakim struggle, or whatever you want to call it. It's basically, we're right now a dysfunctional family, and uh, there's a struggle for either broken family or healing family. And the broken family is what we're going for, because uh, basically... We want disorder and we want to just take shit by force and we're not nice people necessarily. And we get progress from uh, usurping titles, but there's not going to be a lot of that going on, I don't think. Well, unless other people do it, but I don't think we are going to do it a lot. Getting rivals and nemesis, uh, revealing secrets, using hooks, convert uh, involved ruler, killing an involved ruler. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, damn hiccups. We're gonna try to do that a bit and we need to have um, absolute influence which we'll get to um, and we gotta have non-existent uh, influence of the council of scrolls and we're fine if the lost tri tribe has influence like we don't want them to be too powerful but we also don't we're not gonna undermine them we're gonna let other people do that and acquiring claim on a title under the Jure Hispania, I think, is uh, left over from the base game, uh, uh, the base game mechanic. And Healing Family is basically the opposite. So, becoming friends, uh, giving gifts, granting independence, uh, and uh, the other factions having influence and stuff. And right now, this... Uh, this prevents us from declaring wars on people involved, so that's why we're not going to fight a lot of wars. It does give us uh, hostile scheme power and uh, more hostile schemes, so it's going to help us do some schemey stuff. We have culture effect, which lets us uh, learn new... Well, it gives us bonuses for learning languages, so we might look into learning some languages. There is uh, faster of converting faith, we should probably do some of that. And uh, a lot of different, like, scheme stuff. And the influence is done through the decisions. So, there's the state of the person struggle. And we can basically get a little bit of info about one of the, one of the factions. And it says the, the influence each of the faction has. And everyone... No, wait. Not everyone is medium. People have been doing stuff. So Cecilia is weak and these are non-existent. Maybe they start like this. Ashira is strong and we are medium. So we are going to want to boost that. So we can just have a look at what that costs. 
and we can help this well help our faction um, with um, with this if we spend 500 uh, prestige 150 gold and a bunch of stress so we have the money we don't have the prestige so we're gonna hold off on this so basically yeah we're gonna want to do as much as we can to get the broken family because i think we can start declaring wars yeah border raid causes belly for specialization causes belly yeah, yeah so when we if we get the broken family we might lose and just get healing family which then we're gonna have to <laughs> work harder um, so then we're gonna start some wars, but that's gonna take a while. So there's no rush in that. And there's one more event that we're waiting for. Um, Lord Setmes, you may have made uh, you have made considerably pr considerable progress recently. I can read, I promise. The Banu Akim have are more divided than ever, meaning that your web of knives can wield much more influence than before. Still, there's much more work. Uh, to be done before the clan is ready for your master's return. Take notice notice of other factions around you, crush them swiftly. You can't let another elder take uh, take over the Banu Hakim. Once Alamut is fully secured by your brethren, you can be sure that the Black Shepherd will return, uh, will reward you handsomely. For are you not the most trusted servant? The promised age will come. So, um, as Th uh, Thetmes you will gain additional rewards if you complete a God Dreams objective. And that didn't actually show until that event came up, so that's why I haven't gone through this. So, a God Dreams. This is what we're after. These are for the other houses, basically, so I don't think we can. We're not righteous, and uh, the Web of Knives need to be non-existent, so <laughs> we don't want that to win. Center Holes is uh, the Sicilla and... and uh, Sarthrusia and stuff. So we don't want that either. So, a god dreams. Clan Asamite is in denial. Our destiny is to cleanse the earth of the impure blood of the children of Cain and reclaim it for our progenitor Hakim. We must show them the, the truth. Uh, Clan Asamite will convert to your cult and Urshulgi's dream will reap, up, uh, will reap apart the souls of the impure. You will get the Alamut title if you don't already have it. Furthermore, all Asamite characters in Diplomatic Range will now accept vassalization without question. So this is our ultimate goal, basically. I don't know how long that will take. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but basically, we need to have uh, a Web of Knives to be absolute. And the Council of Scrolls needs to be non-existent. And we need a bunch of this. Okay, so let's have a look and see if... No, okay, nothing in Web of Knives. I guess maybe there pops up some numbers here or something. Okay, well, I want to see if we have any interesting mortals to... to... well, either embrace if they're good, really good, or just ghoulify. We don't seem to have anyone with any interesting, like, congenial traits. So... Let's see if we can find someone. Um, um, <laughs> wait. Oh, uh, in, no. Let's see if we can find someone with a good trait. Hideous is not one of them. You there. Can we invite you to court? No. Can we abduct you? Nah, not really. Okay, so let's just have a look in our in our court. Because we can also marry them off to people and get some congenial traits over here. And this guy is very smart. Maybe we'll just grab him. Yeah, we have pretty mediocre people, so let's see if you want to be a ghoul. 52%. It's fine. They seem to have done some changes. Oh, it's diplomacy now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we're gonna try. Uh, because those used to be like 95% on everything. So, hey, we got our first one. So, it, it is not... Um, it does not pop up over here. Uh, this person has 9 intrigue. So, let's see how this looks. Terrible. So, I don't think we're gonna take that that contract unless we have a good 
diablerize? Nah, not really. And he's got a pretty good prowess, so he would be hard to dia diablerize anyway. So we'll just wait for more. Until then, a feline hunter, yes! I think I found the reason why some days are more rat-free than others. My Chancellor Duke Karif Numer uh, happily declares as he moves aside to reveal a servant holding a very displeased cat. It wriggles in an attempt to free itself from the scratched-up arms of the servant, meowling in a rather endearing fashion. I'd say this is one of uh, it's one successful rat hun hunter. In fact, it was in the middle of wrestling a, in a wrestling match with a fat one when we found it. What say you? Should we adopt this cat? Absolutely. I never say no to a cat. We got our first cat, which is great. And I will name them after uh, like old kings of Persia. So uh, Xerxes. That's how you spell that. It's a great name. Act Excellent. So, let's just speed up, let stuff happen. Actually, uh, we can nego negotiate an alliance with you. With I think that was a dear old, dear old papa. Yeah, dear old dad. Let's have a, a, an alliance, that is great. Uh, right, um, since we don't have any good targets here, we should start murdering people in here, because it will advance Broken Family. So, let's just... Uh, Sort according to intrigue and invert it because we want the lowest, like this guy. He is actually, we need them to be involved, we don't want them to be interloper, but yeah, he is involved. Is he my vassal though? Uh, where, where do you live? You live over there. Well, actually, I can see that he's not my mar uh, my vassal because he's. Some he's Transoxiania. Huh, I didn't think they were involved, but I guess they are. So let's see if we can murder you. And you are a vassal in my realm, foreign ruler. Uh, nah. I feel like. Th oh, right. Oh, no. Uh, don't unpause. That's not what I'm doing. Uh, you need to support my schemes. There we go. That's helpful. And we should have be able to do multiple multiple of these still no this is rank um, intrigue and invert again how about you you hate me you only have one and yeah that's fine let's try that and let's see if we can get some kills murder on route when the time comes, my agent will need a safe escape route out of the Count Hedayat's castle. Should anything go wrong, a detailed map of the location, uh, local mountain with all of its hidden paths and caves would be invaluable. Uh, I'll do it myself. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> well, I failed that 60%. Uh, my agents have noticed that the lethargic Countess Lycia acts strange around her. Investigating further would mean putting aside my dark plans for the Countess, but I must admit, my curiosity is piqued. We do get, like, um, we do get progress from just uh, getting secrets and revealing them, so... We could find out if she's hiding something. Did I... Did I get anything? <laughs> Um, a, count to a count to scare. A local mystic with dubious morals and fabricated omen. Perfect. Before th before the mystic leaves for Count Hedayat, uh, Hedayat's court, there is but one question. Will my false omen be one of fortune or doom? I feel like we do, like, had a good omen because uh, it it'll make them feel safe and not look too hard on uh, murder schemes. After careful preparation and planning, you were able to recruit this mortal as your ghoul's thrall. Excellent. We have to spend a little bit of uh, prestige, but that's okay. Let's see if he gets anything good. He got fortitude and potence. That's fine. It's not a very good character, but we can see... Oh. Wait. If he's Path of the Righteous, isn't that our... Yeah, why can he marry? That's not fair. 
Oh well, I'm not gonna complain. So this, uh, she is hail, so that wouldn't be bad. We should, we should probably rank from. Isn't there supposed to be a? Ah, whatever. Let's go for for age then. Look for a good trait. No. She's 28, but that, I guess that is fine. Because we might get Hail Revenants, which would be great. Or maybe even stronger. So let's do that. I will put a pin in you. And... Oh, great. We got a secret. So we are going to expose that secret, because that should give us some... Some uh, divided stuff. And I guess we can't murder you now. Now we have to wait for some cooldown for that. That's fine. But you... Um, wait. Um, yeah, so she is in my title. So, yeah, now she's my courtier. Okay, okay, okay. She just hadn't gotten here yet so let's ghoulify you as well because uh, if both are ghouls they'll live for a long time and make lots of revenants and they'll have revenants and so on and so on a two-headed cow was born oh no Gehenna is on his way and uh, I need, need to look at that we'll, we'll just see the numbers and uh, we're doing good <laughs> it's barely anything yet but we're doing great Away in, Count Hedyat's Faris Hedyat is a flexible man, and uh, as I find myself in his company, I am at first wary. However, I soon realize that he is not as averse to my company as I first thought. So, um, we get some scheme power with that. I hope you're not... Uh, I hope you're not involved in the struggle because I don't want to make friends <laughs> with involved people. But yeah, let's see if we can get some some uh, uh, some murder going. Okay, a sudden but, but expected betrayal. There is always a weak link in any vampire haven. It might be that ghoul that wants to be embraced or that servant that got doubts about uh, serving a damned canite. If you if you can find that weak link, if oh. If you can find that weak link, if, o if if will only be a matter of arranging for the vampire's coffin to see the light of day in the morning. You have several insights of your foe's court. It might and might use them to start such an operation. So, we have 53% chance. And uh, do you have aspects? You do have aspects. So, now's not the time. And are you even supporting? You are. Hmm. Our chance is very low. Do you have presence? You don't. So... I don't think... Uh, I don't think it's gonna be bad against you. So let's try that. And see if the mob can kill him. Mob rule! Uh, as I walk outside, I am greeted by the sight of my marshal, Duke Duja, crouching besi uh, beside my cat, Xerxes, tenderly petting her head. Excellent. Ah, crap. The riot idea could have worked well if Count Hejat wasn't such a skilled practitioner of mental magic, easily returning the crowd, uh, returning the crown, crowd in their favor. They dealt with any hostility quickly and returned to their court unscathed. Too charming to, uh, to die that way, really. Okay, so we gain a bunch of dread and we'll try again. But I think we're going to end this episode here. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode in the series. And uh, if you did, consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.